So yes, I know it's pretty old school that we've got all these uh, DVDs down here in our basement, but uh, these are movies that I loved. And you know, at the time, the only way you could really watch these movies was to have them on DVD. So we started our collection and I just, I'm one of those guys that I just can't get rid of them. Um, one of them that I'm missing though, is one of my favorites and it is the classic Disney cartoon, not the live action version, the cartoon version of Aladdin. I absolutely love it. It was one of my all time favorites and I was rewatching it the other day because actually we can watch it now on uh, Disney Plus. So I was rewatching it and there was a line in the movie that's spoken twice that really stuck out to me. It's a line that Aladdin says to his love interest, Jasmine, and he says it to her twice. The first time it's the beginning of the movie and Jasmine has gone into uh, the marketplace and she's like uh, trying to be a normal person and not a princess, if you haven't seen this before. And uh, Aladdin is known as the street rat. I mean, he's just living on the streets, living by his, his cunning and that kind of thing. Um, and they run into each other and they're trying to get away from these bad guys that are chasing them. Um, and uh, Aladdin reaches down his hand to, uh, to Jasmine and he says, do you trust me? And then he pulls her up and they get away. The second time he says this is later on in the movie after the genie has granted him a wish and he is pretending now to be a prince so that he can trick the princess into uh, being with him and loving him and then they can get married, right? So he's, he's tricking her and in the midst of tricking her, he, um, he is leaving her house. He's like on her terrace and he's gonna jump down and as he jumps down, he jumps onto his magic carpet and the magic carpet's holding him up and Jasmine comes over and he says, you know, basically he's saying, let's go for a ride and he reaches out his hand again and he says, do you trust me? And again, she jumps on the magic carpet because for some reason she trusts him. And so, you know, when I'm watching this the first time, I don't think anything of it, you know, it's the way it is and it, it's all fine. But I started to think about this later and I thought, you know what? That's a big thing. Do you trust me? It really is a big question and it's a big ask. And when you think about it in this movie, it happens twice, once when uh, Jasmine doesn't know Aladdin at all. Do you trust me? On what basis would she trust him? And the second time, he's actively trying to trick her. And he still says, do you trust me? Maybe we'll call it a plot hole. I mean, I still love it. But when you really look deeply into it, this idea of trust is something that is earned. It's hard to give someone our trust if there's no relationship. And it's really difficult to trust someone if we find out they're trying to trick us, right? How do we trust someone who's trying to trick us? So this is where I began to make the connection with faith. Because what I realize is that there are many places in scripture where we are invited to trust God, to give our complete and total trust over to God. And that's hard to do if we don't have a relationship with God. And it's also hard to do if we're not buying into what we believe God is all about in this world. If we feel like maybe it's not the right word, but if we feel like we're being tricked, by a God who tells us to trust him and then things don't go well, you know, trust becomes really difficult. And I was thinking about this as I looked at this, uh, this psalm that's attributed to David. It's attributed to King David. And at one place in the psalm, it's Psalm 31, and at one place in the psalm, he says this. He says, You are indeed my rock and my fortress, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden from me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. I mean, you hear that and you can hear the trust that is in David at that moment, calling God the rock, this foundation for his life. But then later on in this same 
uh, same psalm, David's reflecting on, I believe, things that are actually going on in his life, things that are struggles in his life. He says, I am the scorn of my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. So after talking about trusting in God, he looks at what's going on in his life and all the things that are happening. And he could, he could easily feel as if he was someone who was tricked into having faith and trust in this God. And he reflects on all these things that are going wrong and, and all these things that are happening in his own personal life where he is struggling. But then right after he says this, right after he says this thing about folks plotting to take his life, he says this, but I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My time, my times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and my persecutors. You know, David was someone who had lots going for him. He made lots of mistakes as well. He at times was the great leader. At other times he was being pursued by the king of Israel, Saul. And yet somehow David's heart found a way to trust God even in the midst of struggle and hardship and difficulty. And I think for me, that becomes one of my most difficult challenges of my faith, to find ways to trust in the God who knows me and wants me to have a wonderful experience of life and wants me to have wonderful relationships, both with God and with others. And so I, I'm trying to take an example from David and recognizing it is because of the relationship and the, and, the, and the belief and the trust that he has with his God that allows him to go through all of those difficult as well as celebratory times. Maybe we can take a lesson, not from Aladdin, but from King David and those words of trust.